We have been talking about how to measure a nation's income, but why do we need to measure it? In this video, I'd like to explain how GDP is connected to a society's well-being. Across the world, we use real GDP per capita as the main indicator of the average person's standard of living in each country. And although it is widely used, it is not a perfect measure. It does not measure things that we care a lot about, like the quality of the environment, the amount of time we have left for leisure, non-market activity, or anything that happens in the household, or how equitable the distribution of income in the country is. So if GDP is not a perfect measure of our society's well-being, why do we care about it? Well. Thinking about uh, your body, it would be silly for doctors to use only one indicator of your health in trying to diagnose disease. It would make sense to have a really broad set of indicators to diagnose uh, what is happening. Generally speaking, um, doctors use hundreds of different indicators, but there are a few that are incredibly important. Every time you go to the doctor, they're going to measure your heart rate and your pulse and your blood pressure. So GDP is equivalent to your heart rate, is an incredibly important indicator. If you have no heart rate, well, you're dead. So why do we care about GDP? Well, it's just like doctors care about your heart rate. In fact, many indicators of the quality of life that we also measure independently are positively correlated with GDP. What that means is that they're moving together uh, in a direction that leads us to believe that GDP is measuring all of these things that we care about also. I would like to show you um, some of these indicators that um, are correlated with real GDP per person. Now, in this case, on the Y axis, we have life expectancy, and on the X axis, we have real GDP per person. Clearly, we care about life expectancy is a broad indicator of the health of a population. And if I was to highlight uh, the relationship between real GDP and life expectancy while well, just using a single straight line, I would probably draw something like this. Now that means that we can expect an increase in real GDP per person to be correlated or accompanied by an increase in life expectancy. While clearly this is not exactly right uh, for every country, there are some countries that are above or below that line, we can generally say that a higher re real GDP per person is accompanied by an increased uh, life expectancy. One warning though, um, it is not clear to me that more income per person is causing an increase in life expectancy. It could be the other way around. It could be that higher life expectancy uh, generates real GDP per person. So we're not entirely sure that one causes the other. But if we're talking about the ability of real GDP per person to measure uh, economic well-being, we can just say that both of these are correlated, so more real GDP per person translates into better health, as measured by life expectancy. Another indicator of a society's well-being is their education. Now, just like before, I could draw a straight line um, trying to capture the relationship between real GDP per person and average years of school. And as you can see here, there is also a positive correlation between these two variables. Again, I'll be careful to say that uh, is not entirely um, clear here whether real GDP per person is causing an increase in the average years of school or the other way around. Yet, an increase in real GDP per person is associated with an increase in average years of school.
So more income as measured by um, real GDP per person accompanies a higher level of education in the population. Lastly, I would like to talk to you about the relationship between real GDP per person and overall life satisfaction. That was again trying to describe this relationship uh, only with one straight line. Again, I would get the same result as it did in the previous two slides, and that is there is a positive correlation. So as we are increasing real GDP per person, there seems to be an increase in overall life satisfaction. Being careful here, we can see that there are countries like Pakistan and India who are roughly at the same level of GDP per person in real terms, but they report different levels of overall satisfaction, life satisfaction. But again, if we are just looking at real GDP per person, we could capture some of these reports about life satisfaction. So while real GDP per person is not um, a perfect indicator. It does capture a lot of the relationships we see between societal well-being and the level of income in a country.